So today I'm going to share with you how you can change your master grinder from this to this. Would you believe that this Mazer Mini is more than 10 years old? So for today, I'm going to be sharing with you my restoration project and how you could also convert your Mazer Mini into a doserless version. First things first, this is only recommended for those who have one sitting at home or for those who can score a second-hand Mazer Mini through the marketplace. It's a reliable brand from Italy and it's really built to last. So probably some of you are already familiar with it because you've seen it in one of the Starbucks stores. Um, here in the Philippines. I really didn't have any problems with my Mazer Mini. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm really happy with it. No problems in terms of the grind size, consistency, and the quality of shots that I'm able to pull. But to help you visualize... <laughs> so let me just fix things up really quickly. There we go. Now, this is really a commercial grinder, and the main issue for me is retention. So if you're just gonna use it for 20 to 40 grams of coffee, you would be expecting a lot of retention right inside the doser. So I ended up using either a brush or a spoon to manually scoop everything out and I'll just get my porta filter so that I can put all of the remaining grinds right inside the basket. So you can imagine the workload or the amount of time spent just manually getting the grinds right inside the dosing funnel. So I started searching online for doserless grinders and two models stood out. The DF64 at 20,000 pesos and the Niche Zero at 50,000 pesos here in the Philippines. So I really didn't want to spend that much. Imagine 50,000 pesos for a new grinder. Uh, that's, that's way beyond my budget. So I started researching and at Coffee Home Brewers, I was able to see one of the posts there from the members and he was accommodating enough to show me that there are alternatives coming from Taiwan. So you can see the website, which we will link as well. The manufacturer is based in Taiwan and you can convert your Mazer model to a doserless version by purchasing the face. But there's a big but. It will set you back for around 8,000 pesos to 10,000 pesos to buy the base plate and the hopper cap and to cover for shipping. So that is the first option. It's gonna set you back for eight to 10,000 pesos. Now, the next option that I'm gonna share would be from thingiverse.com. It's basically a 3D site designed for anything that you can think of under the sun. Especially for coffee gears, you have your AeroPress organizer, your Tamper for the Flare Pro 2, but basically they have all of those 3D printed files readily available so that you can have it printed in your local shop. Back to my placing. Check this out guys, I was lucky enough to find everything that I need from thingiverse.com. You have your base plate over here, you have your hopper, you have also your bellow so that you can easily push the air out while you're grinding beans to reduce retention. I like my coffee nook black, so I repainted this myself. So I started by sanding the whole body, adding masking tape on areas that should not be painted, and then added primer and the last step really is to add flat black. And overall, I'm really happy how it turned out and I wouldn't really change anything at this point. So by repainting it myself, I really saved a lot of money. I only spent 700 pesos for the faceplate, 500 pesos for the hopper cap, and the bellows over here and then another 700 to have it painted myself. So let's see my Mazer Mini now in action. Now that it's a single dose grinder, the hopper capacity has been reduced from 600 grams to around 40 to 60 grams at the very most. Let's grind 20 grams of beans to see how much retention my Mazer Mini will make. So let's start. So 20 grams in. So even if I'm using the bellow to push the air out, I still find around 3 to 5 grams of retention every time I grind my beans. If you decide to do this upgrade, there are a few things that I would recommend for you to watch out for. First would be the hopper and the bellow is a bit flimsy, which means that you can easily have it detached, so you need to be very careful. You also have retention, so that is undeniable, but I'm still happy overall since it has been significantly reduced. And then you still need to hold your porta filter manually. From my experience, adjusting the grind settings to dial in your beans is a bit challenging at times. So if let's say you're about to score a second-hand Mazer Mini grinder, you just need to make sure that the adjustment right over here on the top 
Still working perfectly. <laughs> okay. Wala nangyari. Let's let's continue. <laughs> so, yon, yung sample kanina, really um, there, there's still a lot of retention, 3 to 5 grams. So I I wouldn't really say that this one would easily beat Nish or probably DF64 who's serving that purpose really well. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with what I did and the main challenge of retention has been significantly reduced. If you're based in the Philippines and you want to geek out on the Mazer like I did, you can easily search for it on Marketplace or check out Decovert as well. Sometimes they would be um, offering secondhand Mazer grinder up for sale. Would I recommend this to my friends? Most likely not. But I'm still happy overall with the experience I had in restoring this Mazer Mini. So if you have any questions, comments, feel free to fire away by using the comment section down below. If you like this content, Feel free to give us a thumbs up. If not, that's totally okay. We'll see you on our next video.